We'll turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3. As we, uh, as we enter into the uh, month of November, and uh, of course the month of Thanksgiving, and we uh, look forward to uh, celebrating those things, uh, usually just celebrating, but being together with family and friends, and as we uh, do that, and um, this is maybe a little bit of a Thanksgiving message. I guess it's more of a uh, a warning uh, on the uh, opposite, but uh, the Lord laid a, uh, something on my heart, and I want to give that to you this morning, the Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, and we'll read the first five verses. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And I know you say, well, how is that a message uh, uh, about Thanksgiving or maybe not necessarily about Thanksgiving, but I draw your attention to right in the middle of that, the, again, it's in verse two at the end. And you see that among that list of some of these uh, bad attitudes and actions that you have the unthankful mentioned in there. And uh, I want to preach to you on the company of the unthankful, the company of the unthankful. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the day, for what you've given to us. Thankful for a time that we can gather in your house. And again, Lord, as we come this day, I ask that you might uh, bless uh, the time in your word. I ask that you might help me this morning, that you might fill me with the power of your spirit. I pray that you'll just uh, use uh, the things that you've laid on my heart and the scriptures this morning. That, Father, it might encourage and uplift each and every one that's here. Lord, uh, again, those that may not know you, uh, Father, we just pray that they'll uh, understand their need of a Savior this morning. Lord, bless in the class in the back. And again, just help the children to learn more about you. It's our prayer this morning, Lord, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you know, we, uh, we find ourselves uh, uh, in a world that's really different today. And uh, by that, just meaning uh, sometimes it seems, uh, and I think just due to the past few years and uh, the climate of things, we would say it seems a little angry uh, if you get out much. Uh, it seems a little, uh, uh, folks that seem a little on edge. Uh, and I would even include uh, that they seem very uh, unthankful for just life and a number of things about it. Uh, matter of fact, as we go through this today, I'm uh, going to look at some of that, but I just think we just live in a world that seems to just be an ungrateful and an unthankful world. I think it has a dismissal of God as who He is, and they just don't uh, acknowledge that. I think there's been enough uh, uh, teaching against that, even though some of the foundations of our land uh, has that ingrained in, within it. Uh, again, I think we've had enough other things that there's so many people, they just don't credit uh, the fact that they woke up this morning, that they take their next breath, uh, that Almighty God allowed that, uh, that God has blessed them to be in whatever uh, place and state of life that they are in. And some may look at it and say, well, it's tough, it's hard, uh, it's not a blessing. But uh, again, I think that we find ourselves in an unthankful world, ungrateful for the blessings of God. You know, it's interesting that you would think that uh, the word thankful, I guess I didn't look up the contrast uh, or the comparison to it, but the word thankful I know is mentioned several times in the Bible. I uh, preached on some of those things in the past and probably could uh, go to three or four of those pretty quickly just off memory. But the word unthankful is only found two places in your Bible. We just read one of them. Uh, the other one is found in Luke chapter 6 and verse 35. And uh, that particular passage is talking about loving those and how the Lord loves the unthankful. And aren't we uh, thankful for that? He loves us all. But uh, the unthankful, uh, they come to a place and I thought, well, the unthankful, uh, they sure share some interesting company. And uh, that's who we want to look at and think about a little bit this morning. We surely don't want to find ourselves in a place of being unthankful. You know, uh, when I was trying to think of maybe people and uh, life situations, an example. And I thought there's probably not a better one given than in our Bible with the children of Israel. 
we won't take time to turn back this morning, but you know, God brought them out of Egypt. They were uh, enslaved there. They were working hard, forced to work hard, didn't have a lot of freedoms, didn't have the promises that had come to them. Again, they were God's people. God had promised and said, you know, I've got great things for you. I'm going to make uh, great nations out of you. And, uh, and here's what's going to happen. And yet God's people ended up uh, in Egypt. They were, uh, again, having to uh, enslaved and worked hard. God raised up their deliverer and that man, Moses, and he would bring them out and God would use him. And uh, of course, God would mightily deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh. And we know all those accounts or a lot of them, those Bible stories and accounts that we have in Scripture and what wonderful reading it is, the parting of the Red Sea, again, the, uh, the plagues that fell to harden Pharaoh's heart, all that God would do to allow his children to go. But as the children of Israel, one journey too far or very long, into their journey out of Egypt. Instead of waking up every day and being grateful to God, they wake up one day. I mean, and this is after they had seen some of the mighty works of God. I mean, they visualized. I can't imagine some of the things they did see. Uh, but then they come to a point that's like, oh, we have no water. And they begin to murmur and complain. Oh, we have no food. Uh, they begin to murmur and complain. Uh, they came to a place. They even turned on Moses at times. And Moses uh, stands out and in the Bible is one of those, those great leaders, a great intercessor for the people, uh, many times going because God wanted to, uh, at times he said, I'm going to start a new nation with you. And uh, Moses said, no, I don't want that. Don't do that. He would pray that God would intercede and save the children of Israel again. But they time and time again would come out and just complain about where God had brought them instead of looking up and saying, we're thankful to be here instead of there. We're thankful for what God has done and the blessings that he had. You know, they would even come to a, a place that uh, oftentimes they would choose and they made statements that they had things better in Egypt. Because again, they sort of got a little bit of tunnel vision about some of their surroundings and they sort of didn't focus on maybe uh, what God had done for them and they became unthankful. And the children of Israel seemed like time and time again, as you read through the accounts in the Old Testament of what they did. And of course, again, these thoughts and these processes would lead them to some of the troubles they would have. Matter of fact, God would uh, put them back in bondage a number of times just because of their failure to follow him. And so often they would even leave God himself and they would establish worship of the false gods. And they would choose uh, the nation's gods around them, the idols, and they would set up. And there's even some scriptures in the Old Testament where they give credit to those gods for bringing them out of Egypt. Matter of fact, one of the great scenes where Moses would come down off of the Mount of Horeb and he would break uh, the Ten Commandments right there, the music and all that was in the camp and all that was going on, uh, the, the false calf that they had built and uh, all the things that they had done, and even at the, the hand of Aaron, some of those things that came about that you read about in the Old Testament, they had given credit to that God, that false God, for some of the things that the Lord God had done for the children of Israel, the true God who had provided for them, had helped them, and done so much for them. They became to a place that they were never satisfied, and they were really, when you sum it all up, they were very unthankful and very ungrateful in the place that they had come to because they failed to see what God had done for them. The children of Israel stand out as, a, again, a large example. And I didn't look up some of those scriptures because I thought, well, uh, we could spend a lot of time looking at that. And I uh, just wanted to make mention of them this morning because you're probably familiar with some of those great Bible accounts because, again, what God would do to provide the manna, to provide the quails, a lot of that came about was preceded by the murmuring and complaining and the ungratefulness of the children of Israel. And so those Old Testament accounts were given that we might learn from them. And of course, Israel, again, would continue on even after they got in the promised land, borrowing the, if you will, uh, and adopting the uh, false gods of the nations around them. And as they would set those up and as they would put them in and start worshiping them, and then God would bring in other nations to punish them. I know in my own personal reading, reading uh, uh, some of the, the book of Judges and uh, through the early thing where they requested a, a king later on in Samuel. And again, it became because the children of Israel rejected God. And that's what Samuel told them. He said, he said, you haven't just, you know, rejected me as your prophet, but they've rejected God. And the children of Israel had come to a place of being very unthankful 
And again, the events of the Old Testament, the number of them, many of those came because they did not retain God in the place of what God had done for them. And they didn't acknowledge Him in those places. And they would turn against Him. And as we think of, uh, again, the unthankful world that we live in, and I understand that uh, when folks are not Christians, they really don't have maybe a reason uh, to turn up and to be thankful for where God has placed them, what God has done for them. But especially those that name the name of Christ, let us be careful that we never fall into a place of uh, joining with the unthankful, joining with those uh, that just seem to be time and time again focusing uh, on the things that they don't have as opposed to what God has given to them. Uh, but interestingly enough, when you look up that word of the unthankful in the Bible, because it seems to be a, a number of folks, and again, when you look through the Old Testament, probably a, a few examples of the New Testament. We have even the one where Jesus healed, if you remember, healed 10. Only one came back. He said, where's the other nine? They went away. They didn't turn back and give credit to the Lord. They didn't even say uh, thank you, even though their lives dramatically changed. We don't want to fall into a place of that. We don't want to fall into that. And I thought... Uh, interestingly enough, the one place that you find uh, other than Luke chapter 6 and verse 35, and again, uh, it talks about the Lord, and I'll just turn over there and read that and made reference to it. The, the second place that you'll find it, other than our text verse, it says in Luke 6, 35, but love your enemies and do good and uh, lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be uh, the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthinkable, or to the unthankful, and to the evil. And those are the words of our Lord there. And uh, so he speaks of uh, God being kind to the unthankful and the evil. And he is. He loves them just as well. But we find uh, the unthankful. And here we find him mentioned among so many other things. And I want to uh, give you some of that this morning and think upon that. And think again of our response to that. And I hope that again, uh, just a message of encouragement to us. And also maybe a message where we can help others. We find folks in this world, and I think they're just unthankful for where God has put them, even Christian people, and we find that they don't begin to see that. And I think the devil, if he can get people in such a uh, sort of a cycle of this, of being just unthankful, being uh, in a place of not really giving God uh, the diligence and the due that he has, and even not forgetting from where they were uh, have come from. Matter of fact, even as a believer, if we ever forget the fact, and I don't guess we really forget it, but we don't uh, maybe at times acknowledge the fact that the Lord has just saved us. He's took us from a life of sin and from uh, having a, no hope of heaven. And just because of Christ, not because of the things that we could do, but because of what he did. And just for the fact that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood that we might have that life, that that free gift came, not of something that we had to earn, but just because of God's grace. And when we fail to uh, remember those things in our life of where God has brought us from and where we could be without that, we could fall into the, the pit of the ungrateful and fall into the company of the ungrateful. Timothy here has given some encouragement, some admonishment by Paul. And uh, Paul even prefaces this, and he says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Uh, you know, in uh, that phrase, the last days, a lot of people get caught up. Uh, I, I remember preaching a sermon on that one time. It's interesting, uh, the Bible was the last, as soon as Jesus left this world, they were preaching, we're in the last days. He's coming back. We're surely in the last days. Uh, and we qualify for that. So the last days, and he said perilous times, which just means hard, difficult, uh, grievous times. Those things are coming. And matter of fact, they are upon us. Uh, and, and, and they can get worse. And we know that. Uh, so those things, but we, I surely think we fall into that. But then Paul begins to give a whole laundry list, as we might say, of what that it seems like these conditions of that last times would be. And again, the conditions of, and I think it's just the unthankful crowd. And I think unthankful is given its place within this list. But a lot of these folks that fall, and I just say that, that carry about these characteristics, I think that they bear, again, that unthankful and ungratefulness as well. And just notice that the company of those who find themselves unthankful, notice the company that they keep as we look at this list. 
and uh, we'll move quickly through most of these and then hopefully draw a conclusion to that. But the unthankful crowd, they're lovers of their own self. Uh, they're selfish. And again, think about what they're doing. They're surely not honoring God of that. They're covetous. Uh, they're fond of their uh, monies and finances. And again, their uh, greed, those things come about. They're boasters, uh, braggarts, self-exalted. Again, not giving uh, credit to God and for the blessing he has. Because really with that, and he is that he's given to us, because if it wasn't for the Lord, again, giving us the ability to get up, to get out of bed, to think straight, to do that, where would we be? If he didn't give us the ability to take our next breath, and God holds that in his hand. May we be thankful for those things. You know, uh, it says that they were proud. Their uh, self-esteem was important. They're lifted up with pride. Uh, you'll nowhere find that pride is a good thing in your Bible. Uh, this is the company of the unthankful. They were blasphemers and even uh, talking and cursing God. The children of Israel found themselves in that same place. God did so much for them and it wouldn't take them long till they would be right back in a place and they would almost be cursing the same God who they loved just days before and they credited with what that. Oh, how quick they could switch the company of the unthankful. <clears throat> Disobedient to parents. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said about that today. Uh, but it's a mark of the last days. It's a mark of the times that we're in. And again, it just is uh, rooted in rebellion, even by those that are younger. To be unthankful, as mentioned, is as we said within this list, just to be ungrateful for the place that God has put us in or what God has done for us. But even as we follow that, we still see some other things. It says the unholy, uh, no reverence to God without natural affection, actually referring to sin and just pervertedness and just a, a lack of uh, what we might just uh, define as just the proper human love and those things there. We find that within our world today. And what a, what a sad thing that is, a sinful thing it is. Truce breakers, false accusers, those who would slander and just do that. Uh, the in, incontinent, the ones who have no control of appetites or passions. Uh, the fierce, they're just wild and uncivilized. And some of the things we see on the news today and we think, oh, the violence in our world. And, uh, you know, what gets into the mind of people, they fit into this list. They fit into this time. The despisers are those that are good. Uh, you know, they're just unfriendly to, to good people in respect to that. It mentions traitors and those who would be betrayers. The heady, those that are just reckless. And the high-minded, those that are uh, conceited. And again, that they uh, just think more of themselves. And then it sums it all up and it says the lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Uh, again, sensual gratification is their God. Doing what they think is right without concern for others. And just uh, doing, uh, you know, I always uh, think of that phrase that you'll find a few times in the book of Judges. Uh, the reason that uh, the time period of the Judges went on, because it said that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. There was no, again, no authority. There was no one that they bowed to, no one that they looked to, no uh, guideline like from the Word of God, nothing that was given. And that framed the time period of the Judges and why God would send deliverers after years many times, 40 years, 30 years of oppression by another country and by someone. And God would have to send again a deliverer. And so this was the place that they were in. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And we find this list of 18 things that I read that again, the company of the unthankful, this is what makes those people who, uh, again, they find themselves unthankful for the things of God, unthankful for life, unthankful for where God has brought them to, what God maybe has brought them from, the things that God has uh, given to them and what He would provide for them. And yet they company with these people here. They company with these different uh, problems and uh, sins and attitudes that we read about in Scripture, and we find that, again, that's who the unthankful are a part of. You know, when we read that, and we even uh, continue on, that it said they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof from such turn away. That was Paul's admonition to, to Timothy and stuff. And he said these people can even have a form of godliness. Some of them can sort of claim a name of God, but yet they, they don't thank Him. They don't serve Him. They find themselves, uh, again, overtaken with 
again, not only we won't just call them faults, they're just sins. There are those things that, uh, again, separate them from God. And it said, even though they have a form of godliness and they may look good to somewhat on the outside, on the inside, they're evil and they deny the power thereof. And Paul was cautioning Timothy, he said those things, uh, you know, they need to turn away from them, put them out of their lives. Again, the company of the unthankful, because the unthankful is not quite in the middle, but pretty close. And uh, these attitudes seem to go right along with it, the company that it keeps. Oh, may we not find ourselves being in the company of the unthankful. So where does that leave us? It leaves us in a place in our life that we are to just be thankful. We are to be thankful for what God has done for us. And you know, uh, it ought to start with a little bit of humbling. And uh, humbling just when we look up and say, well, why, why me, Lord? Why me? Why did you love someone such as me? And uh, I think if we almost take any other statement, uh, that we begin to come lifted up with pride, thinking we deserve something from our God. Maybe we ought to just simply come and say, Lord, here am I. I'm just a sinner. And that's how we had to come to him. But every day we are to think that. And Lord, why me? Why are you so good to me? And some may look and say, well, life is hard. I've got struggles. I've got trials. But you know, if you dismiss some of the circumstances and look to some of the other things, and again, those things that are eternal, that can't be taken away, we as the, the saved and the child, children of God, we surely can come back to a place and realize that we have much to be thankful for and that our God has truly been good to us and that he has truly blessed us with so much more than we could uh, even uh, comprehend maybe in this world and not even in this world, but in heaven to come, we are to be thankful. And that does start by knowing the Lord, having a relationship with him, having trusted Jesus as our savior and having our sins forgiven. If that's all we had, uh, oh, we are to sing for days and we are to just lift our voices in praise because that's all that God did for us. That should be enough. But the fact that he... Uh, Again, some of the blessings that we have that he gives us uh, the ability to overcome. Because matter of fact, if you looked at this list above us, <clears throat> we all probably battle with some of these things at time. Whether it is pride, whether it is boasting, whether it is uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, having things in our life that, uh, that fall to a place that we might say, uh, you know, with unholy. I mean, we hope that some of these things are not in our life. But again, if we battle with those and we battle with other sins in the Bible, we have forgiveness. We have restoration. We have the spirit that convicts us. He's given us of the word of God to guide us, to encourage us. Uh, we are to be thankful. We are to use those things. We are to come to a place of just knowing him and serving him for who he is and what he has done for us. Our God is good. Our God is uh, mighty to us, but he is good to us. You know, uh, even as we think of that, not just the company and the unthankful of, you know, uh, it's not just a one-time thing of the year. I know we're getting ready in a couple of weeks. Most of us will uh, probably celebrate Thanksgiving in some sort of way. Usually that's a meal with family and friends. Uh, a lot of people will say it's a, a time of year and they sometimes try to do nice things or that during this month. But you know, for a believer, it ought to be a lot more than once a year. Matter of fact, it's really interesting how the holiday gets sort of squeezed if you look at the merchandising part of it. you got Halloween and all the stuff they sell for it. And on the heels of that, they might stick a, you know, a, a little sum about Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving's not a real uh, merchandising thing. And so you got Christmas right there, their shelves almost just to collide. Matter of fact, you can almost go out and buy a Halloween costume and a Christmas wreath and uh, all of that at the same time now. They're just capitalizing on those things. But you know, oh, that we might never push out of the way a time to be thankful. And not just a time to sit down. Matter of fact, Thanksgiving's always a good time. If you gather with family, they get together. Always a good time when you can sit at a table or even just gather for a little while as a family anymore. It seems like people are so busy and spread out. That's always a good time, always a thing. But you know, as Christians, may it not just become a time that we think of once a year, that we lift our hearts and we lift our, our eyes heavenward and our voice heavenward, and we just truly be say that we are thankful for what God has done for us and that we are thankful for the blessings of God and thankful for the place that he has brought us to, thankful for the salvation that we have, thankful for those things. And not that we just 
uh, cry out, Lord, well, I'm thankful I'm not as the unthankful. Again, that's being lifted up with a little pride. Uh, we don't want to come like that publican that came to, uh, the, and the publican and the Pharisee, you may remember those that had come to Christ and the one, you know, I'm thankful I'm not like the other guys. You know, we don't want that attitude, but we want to come that, Lord, I'm just a sinner and I'm thankful for your grace that's been shown unto me. I don't deserve it, but I'm thankful for it. And then may we get up with a heart and a heart that's willing to serve, willing to go, willing to follow our Lord. Because again, when you look at the company of the unthankful, it's surely not where a Christian wants to be. It's surely not the attitudes that we want to have in our life. It is the attitudes we see in the world. And we truly, I think, live in an unthankful world and in a world that can fit into many of these 18 uh, list of things we can find that matter of fact we don't have to go far at all probably this week you've uh you've recognized someone who just was that whether they were blasphemers to the name of god whether they seem so caught up in themselves proud and boasters of things lovers of them own selves as we might say uh people that are false accusers and liars and slanders we know of those things people that just seem wild and uncivilized without any control at all those that would despise the good things of this world, we've seen those people. If you've been out in this world much at all this week, you've seen that. Oh, may we not be in the company of the unthankful. And may we realize that our God is good and has been good to us. And may we be thankful. And may we do it all the year, not just for a, a time, a day, uh, not just for even just a, you know a week or so or a month, maybe even but may we be thankful all the time, all year long, because our God is good and he's done so much for us. He loves us and he'll uh, continue to love us and he'll continue to help us if we'll just let him. The company of the unthankful, a place that we as believers surely don't want to find ourselves in. But you know, as we find those people in this world, may we be uh, again in a place that we can pray for them and we can try to help them Share the message of Jesus because, again, the lost and dying world needs that. We're living in, uh, in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Some of the marks of those last days are those attitudes and within the midst of that, the unthankful. They need Christ. They need to know Jesus and what He did for them. We have that message. We are to take it to them. But again, we are to just be thankful. I think we're more conscious of that, more willing to do that, when we realize that we're a thankful people to start with and we wake up just being thankful for where our God has brought us and hopefully has brought us out. Like I said, the children of Israel, as you read through your Old Testament, uh, when you read those things, take notice of that and notice how God had to respond to them. He didn't quit loving them. He never did, which we're thankful for that as well. A uh, whole other message within that. But all the things he had to do to again because of their actions and how quickly they went to those places. It was sad. It was really a sad commentary and you can find it time and time again in the Old Testament. It's really the account of the children of Israel. It's why God would do all the things that happened to them. The splitting of the kingdoms, the dividing, all the things that took place due to their rebellion, their choosing of other gods, their unthankfulness for the true God who had brought them out and done so much for them. Let us not be in the company of the unthankful. Let us stand this morning with our heads bowed as we close our time together.